what Steve said, the long term starts now. We, we've actually had scientists just recently say in an email message about this uh, article, which by the way is out front, about 60% faster level, rising sea level, level than had been previously predicted, saying, well, we're not really going to get around to doing too much about sea level rise and climate change in this century anyway, so let's just adapt to sea level rise. We think that it's preposterous. If you, the longer you wait, one, the worse it's going to get, and the more, more, most, more catastrophic the effects of sea level rise and other climate change in fact it will become. But also, the huge co the cost will increase tremendously the more we wait. And I think it will be clear after you leave here today, by the time you leave here today, that the markets for alternative energy, once they're freed up, present huge benefits for consumers, for taxpayers, and for getting on with the program to deal with climate change. So uh, that's a big reason why we're all in favor of alternative energy. But another little known factor, which is brought out in one of the editorials they published in the summer, is that uh, conventional forms of energy, including nuclear plants as well as coal plants, are huge wasters of water. And there's a Georgia Water and Stewardship Act passed about three years ago that exempts what? Power companies. So we have a concert water conservation program in the state, and it exempts the largest water users in the state. And, and the state energy plan makes no connection whatsoever to water management. This is insanity. So we're trying to make sure that these kinds of factors are integrated in future policy development and uh, trying to help remove the constraints on the development of new markets, such as alternative energy. We'll hear more about that today.